You're listening to Empire of Rust, the world's first and only Transformers RPG podcast. Join the heroes of Icon as they defend Cybertronian civilization from the remnants of Cybertron First to Lord Starscream's egotistical leadership and beyond to the unknown threats on the other side of distant stars. Welcome back to Empire of Rust, the first and greatest Transformers RPG podcast. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I know we kind of blew past it on the last episode and didn't really talk about it, but we had a lot of shit to deal with, you know? We didn't have time for for season's greetings and what have you. We had levels to talk about. But that is all in the past now because we are looking to the future for Christmas time. So this got me thinking. So we just went through Thanksgiving and we have Christmas coming up soon, along with all the holidays that brings What would you think is a Transformer holiday? What would would they celebrate? Matt, what do you think? Uh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) I think I think they would celebrate Hanukkah because it's all about oil, and (laughs) Transformers would be down with that. I think. Okay. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) You asked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Something. Maybe something like uh like the till all are one day, like you know, like the like the almost like a day of the dead, where it's just like, oh you we represent you know, we respect all the people whose sparks have gone into the matrix before us. Kind of like an all Hallows Eve kinda kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That could actually be kinda cool. I wonder if like Decepticons would also like uh would would they celebrate that? Or would that be more of like an Autobot holiday? I mean, is the Matrix not a Decepticon thing? It's, it at least in this continuity, it is an artifact of the Primes, and the Decepticons rebelled against the lineage of Primes and like their rulership okay. of the society. So you could say one way or the other. The colonies, I think, definitely would, would celebrate that because they're all about the Primes. They're like the demigod figures. Uh, I actually did some research on transformer holidays before uh and i think i had mentioned uh motherboard day when it was coming up on mother's <laughs> oh, day oh yes <laughs> uh but uh i i have them all right in front of me right now there's all spark day chosen one day which is i think sort of like valentine's uh cyber solstice uh deliverance day um primal procession uh, Festival of Lost Lights, uh, Festival of Primes, and Unity Day, which I think has also been referenced once or twice in, in the podcast. I think the, the Chosen One Day, I think that's something Starscream set up for himself. <laughs> Makes complete <laughs> he would sense. create a holiday for himself. Because <laughs> Starscream in the lore, in the IDW lore, is, is considered the, like, the Chosen One. The uh, the Titan like chose him. It's like, oh yeah, like, you you can rule. It's like, yeah, all right, and that would totally track. That it makes sense that he would set that up for himself. Imagine, why like, why does the, the 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 you know the voice of a Titan matter so much? Like they're just big robots. Like why does that matter? They are ancient robots, and they are incredibly well respected throughout Cybertronian society. It's more like an elder statesman kind of thing. If someone, if a Titan says something, people listen to it. Okay. Don't you feel like people listen to you more when you're transformed into... Um, alloy? Alloy versus uh, your own form. Uh, I he's, never, he's never been involved in a debate during that time. Yeah. And if he <laughs> had, how do you think it would go? <laughs> I refute that argument. But I mean, like, there's a difference <laughs> okay. between being like, I am big, I am strong, therefore might is right. Like, yeah, I get that. That's not what these things are. Like, this is a just, I say something and it's like, all of a sudden you're a saint or like, the like literally the chosen one. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, is there, uh, is there royalty, you know, in Cybertron? In like, a, you, ca- in the- you call it a palace. Why isn't it just like his, like, you know, the state house. Yeah, I'm sure he thinks he is royalty. <laughs> it is Starscream after all. Right. 
but also the uh, the the primes, like the ancient primes, were the ones who built the the titans or helped to, to construct the titans. So I think it's just that they're so ancient and they have a direct connection to like the ancient the ancient leaders of the people that it's just. You know, like, I guess it's it's like, you know, in the real world here, if someone who who lived through like both world wars and everything for the last like 100 years, like says something, you know, even if you disagree with them, you're still going to listen to them talk about it. Yeah, but I guess I don't if they were just like, hey, this guy sh- should rule the world. I'd still I don't know. I guess I don't just don't think believe in that stuff. Yeah. Well, well, it's like Moses just sort of showed up and said, you know, we're talking longer time scales here, you know. This, this guy should be in charge. A lot I of guess people so. listen to that. I guess, I guess they would. Are more titans born, or is, are, is there literally a finite number? And that's it. There's a finite number right now. New ones haven't been haven't been forged in a very long time. Again, in in the lore. So okay. So killing a titan is a really big deal, then. Oh Don't yeah. Care. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Just How many imagine people that Titan who, who picked Starscream is like, like after Starscream leads, re, leaves, he like looks around. Oh, there's my glasses. Uh, who did I just promote? Yeah, <laughs> you can you can count probably on on one hand the number of people who have killed a Titan. You're you're not dissuading him. <laughs> and then it's another Titan. And as a Yukaran, you you would know this too. There was a Titan on Yukaris named uh, Chella. It was the Titan that brought a lot of the the, Yuka- the original Yukarans there. It woke up when contact was reestablished with Cybertron and was enraged. Windblade and Starscream killed it. Jeez. Interesting. Isn't Windblade a Yukaran? Windblade is a Camion. Camion. Okay. Mm-hmm. The two of them, uh, the the two of them were the ones to make the initial like like uh, uh, inroads into diplomacy with Yukaris. And when they arrived, Chella woke up and just went on a rampage. Was it like brain okay. damage or something like that? Chella hated non beast formers in the lore. So when the space brood was reopened, she kind of thought, like, hey, you know what? We're like, that's it. it. It's the end of the world. I am going to destroy everything and stop, you know, from the, the standard formers, the, the standard Cybertronians from coming here and ruining my world. She picked a fight with with named characters, <laughs> and they killed her. And that goes back to rid- Pat's original argument: Why the hell are we listening to these things? Because <laughs> that's yeah. two two of them that are, that have not had the best ideas so far. <laughs> well, maybe you should hunt down the one that went to Earth. You know, the sister Coachella. <laughs> wow! Oh my God! How oh about we God. skin the bear to make a new Coachella bag for you? That, I think, might be a bit extreme. <laughs> you need to have, like, a camo- camouflage form where you just lie on the ground. <laughs> Flatten out. <laughs> form of a rug. It could work. It could work. For, form of dead me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have a segue from a dead rug <laughs> to what you guys are doing today. <laughs> So we're just going to jump right in. Sure, why not? At the end of the last episode, you may have just blown this this investigation wide open. Yeah, we did. You managed to track down the scent from from, uh, uh, Depth Charge's house and with some exceptional rolls all around, you were able to track the scent to the diplomatic building, and with a great computer's role, you were able to figure out who it is that was in the Depth Charge's home. And it was the bot Waveform, uh, the assistant to Lamplighter, the guy who was interviewing Damascus uh, when denizen was over uh in damascus's place and trying to to talk to him about the investigation i remember that we fucker <laughs> denizen so far has been the only one to to really meet or interact with waveform 
Uh, but I will say, Carapace, you actually are aware of her because you would have seen her uh, during Sweet Spot's political rallies. You probably didn't talk to her or anything. You probably didn't even talk to, to her boss there, Lamplighter, but you're right. at least aware of them. Okay. So should we share that information with Ironhide as well? Or are we yes. sitting on that? We should definitely share that information. He's got the resources to go out and actually find these box. Whether or not he actually apprehends them, you know, that has yet to be determined. I believe Lamplighter was his name. Yeah, that's her. That's her regular boss. That may not be the actual boss. Do you know? Um, do you know what we could do? I could just go to Lord Scourge and ask him to like have like a press conference and invite them to come. That's a really good idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> I'm glad you thought of it. Can we put this in action right away? <laughs> I'd love to see this wrapped up. Uh, you do have a couple of things to at least to look at and think about. You have Fast Track that you have not spoken to over on Velocitron. Uh, and you are in the diplomatic building, so if you do want to speak with any of the representatives of the various planets, uh, you could potentially get uh, either an audience or information from them as well. Well, we know that we, know we need to go see Fast Track probably sooner than later because I'm, he might end up dead too at this point, the way it's going. Um, are we in the... We're in the place where, like, Zaron and... and works like could we actually go and see if uh, legionnaire is coming with us or yeah absolutely he's just upstairs okay. oh is he okay well let's go uh let's go do that one and then get ready to go all right sounds good so you extricate yourself from the security office the uh, the dude there magnum that you kind of bully just gives you a dirty look on the way out just tip some ash on the floor <laughs> <laughs> and as the door closes you hear him start cursing you <laughs> just cursing in Cybertronian <laughs> oh my goodness the servant protect really you make your way up to the elevators and start heading upwards and if you remember the last time you were here you had some security badges that you grabbed from uh, the badge list that you knocked out on the way in what did you ever do with those? Certainly didn't give them back, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ergo, ergo, we must still have them. <laughs> Although they haven't revoked it by this point since the badge was lost. <laughs> and that's on their head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you, uh, you press the button for the upper floors and red light pops up. Uh, you know, it's expecting clearance to, to use the elevator to get up there. I mean, we probably just call him. He can let us up, you know. <laughs> we don't have to use stolen badges. Yeah. Yeah, I'll call him out of... I'll call Zaron's office. All right, you can do that. Uh, hello, this is Zaron. Oh, hello, Zaron. Long time no see. This is Magnum. Ah, uh, Magnum, my friend. It has been a while. Legionnaire and I were just talking about you. Oh, dear. Well, even despite that... <laughs> Um, do you mind if we come up and visit? We're in the building. Uh, oh, right now. Uh, uh yes, yes, uh, yes, certainly. I will, uh, send a Legionnaire down to, uh, to bring you up. All right, thank you very much. And you get off the elevator, wait for Legionnaire to come down and get you, <laughs> then you go, <laughs> go back <laughs> well, Doing things the normal way is a little more difficult. <laughs> So maybe we should have Zaran call a press conference. Or do you think Scourge is a better idea? You get up out on the top floor, head down the hallway. On the way out, uh, Denizen presses all the buttons on the elevator. Uh, of course. Ba -do 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 -do. At least she learned her lesson last time. I'm an exceptional bear. Legionnaire looks at you and is like, Why did you do that? Don't ask questions that you don't want to hear the answers to. Magnum, is this bear with you? <sighs> yes, yes, I'm afraid so. <laughs> and he'll bring you down the, the hallway to uh, Zaron, and, and he'll bring you in. Don't act like you're anything but proud of me. Oh, yes. I'm just glowing with pride. <laughs> uh, hello. 
Hello, uh, Magnum, uh, Carapus, uh, Wildstrike, and I'm afraid I haven't met your your new friend here. Whom do I have the, the honor of addressing? I don't know about that, but this is Denison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, excellent to meet you, uh, Denison. And what is it you do here? I am the administrator for the city. Fine, fine, fine. All right. Why did we come? <laughs> you need to get Legionnaire, right? I want, yes. yeah, I want, yeah, I want Legionnaire to come play with us off world. You know, uh, that, and, well, so I mean, that's actually a good idea. We could, uh, use Zaron as a press conference type person. Uh, that could work. Um, I'd also like to f- have us, uh, go downstairs. I, I want to, uh, effectively upgrade some of our lower tier weapons from that, that guy that I met when we were here the first time. Like it's time for the, my next red star, my red star conqueror to become a red star conqueror. <laughs> <laughs> red right. star conqueror. Woo! That's a callback. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> I almost thought you were going to do that in an Irish accent. I almost did that in an Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> Might hurt himself. Y- yes, uh, Legionnaire, as long as you are okay with it. Uh, I I have been fairly safe these, these last few weeks. Uh, if you need him for uh, for some some mission, and he does right. the mission in quotes, yeah. <laughs> then yes, uh, absolutely. We can, I, I can certainly lend him to you. Who would be the, either the rarer or the, just the, like the, the more valuable like giving the interview because like waveform does the whole interviews thing right so lamplighter is the reporter and waveform is like the microphone camera okay like so who would be like on a stand right who would be the bigger win for them lord scourge or zaron since it's an election season probably scourge okay can we get a can, can we possibly get a tracker from uh from these these things these people here because if he has a face-to-face interview with Lord Scourge, I can't imagine you Yukarans, some of the Yukarans are probably really good at stealth, and they could probably attach one of these things to him. You could probably use this, and I'll hold out my fidget box. <laughs> <laughs> he place this on him. There's no place it can go I won't find. I, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Just hold it there for two to six hours while that cures. <laughs> like <Lucius. laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help but uh, over here. If you're looking for a tracker, uh, you can. Uh, I can send you Wolfang again. He is very capable tracker. <laughs> now we yeah. I, we, we actually or, we actually meant like a, a tracking beacon, I think, right? Yeah. And and Wolfang di- is dead. Sorry, unfortunately. Yeah. Wait. What? Yeah. Wait, when did this? I last saw him a few days ago. I he was. In good health, good spirits. What what happened? He was uh, murdered. Right. Well, we'll give it. Hold on. I'll murdered transform it to a device and turn on the signal jammer. Because <laughs> this is getting private. Yeah, that's 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 fair. But we can we can fill these guys in. Maybe they can help us. Okay. Um, Take a few minutes. Fill in all of them. Uh, fill in everyone with all the information you learned over the last couple of days. So they must be like, what the fuck? Like everywhere <laughs> you guys go, crazy. Like, uh, ass- like assassinations and oh my god like they're dead too oh my god like you know <laughs> it's, like, it's like the death murder charge. she wrote syndrome you yeah. know <laughs> death charge is dead yeah exactly I had a dinner day with him tonight <laughs> oh, no. well he's not gonna make it yeah more food for you. We were going to have calamari. (laughs) (laughs) So you're saying there's an opening then? So I think, but so we're thinking just to, as between the, between all of us, Zaron is in with the plan with us right now. I don't know if there's anything he can do, but get Scourge to have him do an, do an interview with this dude, right? Maybe one of the Yukarans can put a, a sensor tracking sensor on him if we can find one. And then try to trace who might his boss might be. Okay. Does that sound? I'm I'm asking the other people because this is. I a, mean, do we? Uh, I guess the idea is, do we 
is finding the boss more important or just catching the, the assassin more important? Depends on how much information we think we can get out of him. We can probably get a fair amount out of him. Well, if we put together a um, press conference and the don't show, they might already be on their way to take care of the, the other fellow that's off, off world, which would put yeah. quite a bit of a rush on our getting to him. Yeah, I mean, we should definitely prioritize that, but it's a table tape this for now, then. It's a, it's a good idea for later. Well, I mean, uh, we, we could we use just it. Just go see Depth Charge right away. I mean, well, Depth Charge is dead. Yeah, we'll fast, track. fast track right away. Yeah, yeah that's, maybe that's, that's a good idea. Um, you uh, you looking to you looking to, to to have some fun, Legionnaire? Yeah, yeah, I can do some. I mean, I I know how you think. So, I've been <laughs> stuck in an office for uh, for a while here. I'd like to get out and stretch my legs. Ha! Hey, hey, come on downstairs. We're gonna we're we're, we're updating some of our equipment. I want to see what the new electric shotgun looks like. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. He takes out two electric shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> Less exciting. <laughs> but double like fisting a... shotguns? What's not to like about this carapace? I thought you'd be down uh, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's cool. No, he needs a shotgun with a shotgun attachment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it's an automatic shotgun, like that's that's crazy. Because normally, like shotguns, you're like, like you hit an area and that's it. But if it's automatic, well, what have you been buying lately, huh? Oh, and, as the, and, and as the two of you get to talking, you go to start going heading down the hall into the elevator, so you can make your way down to the. Yep. All right. Uh, all right. I think maybe it's time we inform Ironhide. We'll get get the. These body things recorded. You guys can go off and find your weapons. So you guys okay with me uh, contacting uh, Ironhide now and giving me a full that report down? Well, we don't have a lot of options for communication specialists, do we now? But just if that's a dig, it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we we should contact Moonracer if we're gonna go over to we're going to go over to Velocitron. To try to help us help us contact Fast Track. She is uh, currently in this building. Oh, all right. So maybe you could contact maybe, her. If I, maybe I'll go visit her after this. Then I think she's a little more trustworthy than Knockout. Apparently, but sweet spot seemed to think anyway. All right, I will. I will make that a priority. Um, but you guys can go get your weapons. I can do some communication and set up stuff. Um, unless you guys need something else. Carapace and Legionnaire are heading down to get some weapons upgraded. Magnum, you are going to talk to Moonracer, see if you can get some uh, some help getting uh, contact with Fast Track. Denison and Wildstrike. I'll be going with Magnum to make sure he doesn't cause any trouble. Okay. Babysit and Magnum. I'll be going with them to make sure Denison doesn't cause any trouble. And babysitting Denison. All right. <laughs> <laughs> As expected. Have I told you how much I respect you, Wildstrike? <laughs> <laughs> so much respect. <laughs> um, if uh, uh, Carapace, if they have a shield projector of any level, grab it if you can. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, not at all, really. I've got everything I need right here attached to me. All right. Well, I was going to call Iron- Ironhide first and then fill him in on this, all this nonsense that we've been up running around doing. So he knows where to find the bodies. He has all the ed- evidence, and he knows the identification. Basically, give him all the information we have on this. All right. And that we're going to be trying to trying to either catch or track the assassin. But we're gonna gonna we want to go to Lostron first to to speak uh, to Fast Track because he's probably in danger. And we need to talk to him anyway. So. So I will give him a ring and f- tell him all that. I don't know if there's anything uh, you need me to explain. Ironhide, uh, I'll give you uh, what what ha- what knows about three corpses and an assassin. I'll give you two guesses. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'll raise my hand. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
no, 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 no. You already know. Oh. He needs a guess. Oh, oh. Uh, All right. Uh, you said you said two uh, guesses, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, All right. So my, my first guess would be uh, Starscream, my first guess. And my second guess would <laughs> Maybe be... Maybe right, but we're not sure. <laughs> and my second guess would be your new friend there, Denison. I'll yeah. drop my arm. And Technically, put I have to accept that. Both arms <laughs> on my hips. What is he saying now? He's saying you know the answer. Yes, I, I know the answer, but is he implying that I am the one? No, no, no. Knows about, knows about. Oh, all right, yeah. You're right. But yeah, you, uh, you're able to get in touch with them, no problem, and explain everything. Uh, we can push past it if you, unless you have a question you need to ask. No, I mean, unless he plans, I'd like to know what he plans on doing, if, if anything. Um, I will upload, I will send him all the video footage that we gathered from this from the, the building, from the uh, ambassadorial building. With uh, with this new information, my plan is to uh, go ahead and get and send uh, send Central Reclamation over to deal with Deb Charter's body and then put Waveform under surveillance. All right, I like that idea. Um, I'll make sure to mention Wolfang, too. And, and Wolfang's prob- dead? This- yeah, everyone seems so surprised. I mean, I'm, I'm, just, not, I'm not sure why they're so surprised. He keeps picking fights with bots bigger than them, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> I mean, it was bound to happen eventually. I had an exhibition match with him this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he really had... He was really involved in social things, doesn't he? He was such the social butterfly. You never would have guessed. I could imagine his funeral. There's going to be thousands there. Everyone liked Wolf, eh? Well, everyone except Carapace, that is. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can only pee on a guy's front door so many times before you start to make a bad impression. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we are uh, pretty sure that his killer's been dealt with, though. Um, you've probably heard about the large spider that was found fricasseed downtown. So <laughs> that problem's been taken care of. I did get some reports about that. Was that you, boys? I'm girl. Well, uh, unofficially, yes. <laughs> Off the record, gotcha. My lawyer, who is also my head, advises me. To- <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, but uh, it shouldn't be catching us this off guard, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's fan favorite for a reason, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, thank you. So yeah, but uh, I mean, you might want to investigate that though, because. The, the web weavers or the, the spider spider zoids spider droids are involved somehow and I will send them the list that they, the spider droid had too okay yeah easy enough and then that's it for unless you need something else for me I'll head over head over to uh, uh, Moonraker we'll head over to Moonraker Moon remember Race. I've got my Moon eye Raker. on Moon you Raker. right we're not doing a James Bond movie thing are we <laughs> And Wild and Wild Strike will follow Denizen very closely and just slap away hands whenever it gets uh, too rough. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Don't touch. Uh, yeah. So you head on over to the uh, the counselor's offices. Uh, there's a receptionist, and you tell the reception who you'd like to meet. And it takes uh, it takes a few minutes for for word to get back and forth, but you are invited in to. Uh, the Velocitronian Delegation's office. Uh, you head on in. Better have a picture of Sweet Spot on the wall. Uh, there is like, a, in, like an in memoriam picture of a uh, Sweet Spot on there. All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so Moonracer will meet you out in like the the antechamber for the the offices, and we'll kind of sit you down and and talk with you. Uh, hello, I. Uh, I did not expect to to see the the three of you uh, at any at any point, um, but thank you, thank you for coming to uh, coming to visit. Uh, what? Please tell me what can I what can I help you with? Uh, we oh. appreciate your time, Ambassador. Sorry, Glenn. Yeah, I would point at the uh, the portrait of Sweet Spot. Is this the fellow that you were adventuring with? Is this the yeah. one that's been getting all the the attention and the name drops? Yeah, yeah. This is the guy. You better believe it. That's sweet spot. 
It doesn't look like anything special to me. Yeah, he's real. He's really not. <laughs> Depends on who's looking, man. All right. Fine. Anyway, thank you for your uh, time, Madam Ambassador. We well, this was sort of an unexpected visit, but we were hoping that you could help us get together with Fast Track on uh, Velocitron, and we wanted to make sure uh, it's possible that he's in danger as well. So that's why it's sort of urgent. So we wanted to get over there, talk to him, and make sure that he's all right. Abs- yes, ab- absolutely. I can definitely help you with this. Uh, I was actually planning on heading back to Velocitron myself uh, later this afternoon. Uh, I was, I had some some business to to discuss with uh, Knockout, with Representative Knockout. Um, I would more than willing to to bring you as my as my guests and to give you space bridge clearance. So that's not a problem. Uh, are you? Is it the? And she kind of like leans in close. Is it the assassination attempts that you're concerned about? Yes, yes, indeed. Um, we're also bringing, you know, the rest of our team, Carapace, Legionnaire, as well. Yes, I, if you could do us a favor and not mention the fe- why we're going there, or, you know, keep it on the down low. We don't want anything changing, you know, or anyone, to be, anything, anyone feeling like they have to speed things up. We can meet you right at the departure time. Yeah, we don't want to speed anything up going to Velocitron, do we? <laughs> Liable to catch fire? Uh, certainly. Uh, what I can... Uh, what is the best way of approaching this? I can try to... Ooh. Yes, I can give you... I can give you guest passes for now. Uh, that is... It's not unusual for uh, a representative to, to issue passes to people who are uh, looking to, to emigrate to Velocitron. Uh, and that should not cause any particular issues. Don't worry, we're, we're, we're good at showing up places unexpectedly. <laughs> uh, apparently you're correct, you showed up here. Uh, but we appreciate it. Um, well, Strike, did you have any other thoughts? Or Denison, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of business are you looking to wrap up on Velocitron? Would it be... Assassination of, of candidates. Why, I never. Well, strike. <laughs> All right, enough. <laughs> oh, come on, sick guy, sick guy. She's learning. She's special. You know. Um, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> she doesn't mean it. Just had a few many, too many hits. Hits of the honey pot lately. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, very well, Inspector Magnum. Uh, everyone gets one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, I'll take my leave of you before anything gets worse. <laughs> I'm planning to leave in uh, about two hours. Uh, you can come back uh, here when you're ready, and we will we'll head out. Or if you'd like, you can meet me at the the space bridge in two and a half hours. Right. I think we'll meet you at the space bridge. But, so, thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Bless you, Wild Strike. God, give me a chance to breathe there, Wild Strike. You, you don't, don't have breathe. to corrupt the entire muzzle. Well, if you breathe, you talk. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that gives me an idea. Point. Potato, <laughs> potato. <laughs> and true to her word, she will uh, set you up with uh, with effectively like travel visas for Velocitron. Uh, and unless there is uh, anything else, uh, we can fast forward to to when you meet her. All right. Deposit us on the day side. You mean? Good way to get rid of us all. The space bridge is going to take you right into Delta. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, because we need to stick with her anyway, because she can get us a meeting probably faster than anything else, right? So. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, two and a half hours later, you meet at the Space Bridge Plaza. Uh, there's still a, a somewhat large crowd kind of gathered around the uh, in the plaza. Uh, because it's be- it's turned into this kind of impromptu meeting spot for like political rallies and gatherings and everything, kind of like a, like a large like central park would be for us. And the 
the space bridge turns on, turns off, and people arrive, people leave. Uh, but she will uh, gather up the uh, the five of you and uh, bring you over directly to the space bridge controller, and she'll flash her diplomatic clearance and she'll cut in line just in front of everyone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, that's us. We're we're important. Yeah, like that. Like, oh, wait, I'm gotta catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I don't say this, but. There are times I love being a diplomat. Yeah, yeah. I get used to this, man. <laughs> it's good to be the diplomat. Man, I can see where Speed Spot was coming from. This is uh, actually going to be interesting for you guys. This is, I think, the first time you're going through a space bridge. Yeah, I think so. For some of you, at least. No, Denizen, you, you've done it before because you had to. Yeah, I had to get back to and forth there. Mm-hmm. It's no big about, deal. I mean, I mean I've, the, I've been several times just I don't think in character though like for since we're you know on camera thing. Yeah. What about uh, you Outstrike? Would I have been through them during the war? Maybe, maybe not. All depends on like where you were you were stationed. Uh from the, the Vault of Stars like, you wouldn't have been using space bridges, but yeah. you, you can decide that. You could have been on troop transports most of the time. Or you could just not like space bridges and just want to fly around everywhere. I definitely think this version of Wild Strike has never been through a space bridge. At the least. Mm. That's fair enough. What about Nico? Has he been through it? Nope, I don't think he has. Oh, fresh face going through the space bridge there, alright. Yeah. And lastly, what about Magnum? Not in living memory. Not that that's not saying much, but... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe thousands of years ago. Possibly. See? So yeah, I don't for a think there's of you, any reason is... why he would get there. Well, no, unless there was one on Junk Cap. I don't think there is. So. I don't think so. It, there is, but it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Beat me by that much. <laughs> just a, it's, a, it's just a, it's just a, a, space, a space rope line. You know? A rope <laughs> line? The controller punches in the coordinates for Velocitron, uh, and the space bridge shimmers to life. Who's going in first? I will. I will. I was gonna say I, I will. <laughs> well, Moonracer will will certainly go up first, but for the the five of you, Carapace, you're going first. Yeah. So Moonracer uh, goes ahead, and no fear, just straight through. Carapace, same thing, just walks right up, yeah. straight through. I'll be next up. Denizen, bear form or bot form? Bear form, of course. Have to make an entrance, you know. You shuffle your way through and zoop. Who's next? I'll go. Yeah, Geronimo! <laughs> you jump through. Uh, all of the ash from your coat doesn't come with you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's, <not> clean. <laughs> it's dry cleaning as well? Shit. <laughs> wow. Turn, it turns out it's like pink. You know? <laughs> it never knew. <laughs> <laughs> all right, which one are you next? Who's left? Oh, just, just Wild Strike, right? Yeah, yeah. Wild Strike so, and Legionnaire. Legionnaire. I'll, I'll look at uh, Nico and say, you ready? Yeah, let's do it, boss. Let's go. And jump through. <laughs> and zoop. And behind you, Legionnaire follows. The energy of the space bridge flickers and fades away, leaving the five of you facing a large plaza with a half a dozen roads leading away from the central area. Some of them angle downwards into the depths of the city and others lead upwards, looping around the tallest buildings of the metropolis. All around you, you can see the signs of decay as what was once a bright, shining beacon of a Transformer, the Titan Navitas, speeds along in his never-ending lap of the planet, all in an effort to keep his inhabitants out of the deadly radiance of Velocitron's star. Uh, Denizen, from behind you, you feel someone pushing you. Hey, hey, hey. Move it along, you mook. What do you take your hands off me? I'll transform back into bot mode so that 
hope they'll treat me like a person. <laughs> and you can see that there are some other people coming out of the space bridge, and as you stand and gawk there, uh, you're in the way. Totally understand. <laughs> Come on, you're embarrassing us. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is something new for you. I, I was just going to say, like, you know, we just don't say it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, along the edges of the Space Bridge Plaza, you can see signs for slow tourism. It's a fleet of impatient-looking Velocitronians with metal rickshaws. <laughs> <laughs> the larger, slower bots of Velocitron are generally looked down upon as like, second-class citizens, uh, but their strength and their speed make them uniquely suited to this kind of tourism. Uh, off to one side, Moonracer is waiting for all of you to arrive. So, how do we go about saying fast track? Moonracer is a uh, an ambassador. She's one of the two uh, delegates of the planet to the Council of Worlds. Her okay. and Knockout. So, technically, more a representative than an ambassador. Uh, the Knot of Habit uh, uh, Legionnaire will be using his like cover ally ability for her. Okay. Oh yeah. That's okay. very fair because she is fair, she is fairly important. Yeah. People have had having. Having have people have been dying around us quite a bit. Yeah, lately, so. and he can he can do that he can do that very fast now. So excellent. Why does it smell like burnt everything? <laughs> I'd say you get used to it, but you really won't. So it's nighttime here, I assume. It's always nighttime, right? Yes, it is always nighttime on Velocitron. Uh, if it is not, that is a significant problem for everyone. It's daytime. You won't you won't it won't bother you for long. <laughs> And just a reminder for everyone too. So, uh, so the Titan Navitas is the the effectively the tracked city that is rolling around the planet, desperately trying to stay in the night side because the day side of Velocitron is so so bright and so intense uh, that it will effectively melt anything that the, the sun touches. And it will glass over any, like, dirt or sand or anything like that. It is super, super hot to the point where even uh, Cybertronians can't survive. So all of the cities on this planet are racing around the, the, the planet in, in a, a constant, constant race. Is it difficult for them to do that? Uh, not especially, because a lot of the surface has been worn smooth, partly because of the heat and partly because just... The vehicles rolling over so much. Seems like a lot of work. Why don't they just move? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying what I think every time I come to this stupid planet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Wildstrike. You just don't understand our our culture. This is is who we are. That would be like me saying to you, like, why are you flying? Flying isn't uh, dumb. Uh, <laughs> All right. Fair. <laughs> that example. <laughs> All right. Before we have another international incident, can you help us right. find uh, fast track? Wild strike. You're really gonna have to pull double duty now. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you guys and ambassadors? <laughs> uh, as the uh, the six of you are uh, talking, a fairly large uh, transit vehicle will pull up to the Space Bridge Plaza. Uh, actually, it is. It looks to be a former uh, vehicle for uh, Fast Track's campaign. So it seems like a public transit kind of thing that is is plastered with like fast tracks like campaign messages. Hmm. Which is fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you had to think one of us were gonna ask. Speed is life. All right, I think so. Yeah, it's life. I've arranged some transportation for us. Uh, I did. I uh, check on uh, on with Fast Track's uh, former campaign manager. Uh, he he spoke with Fast Track the other day, uh, but he's okay with uh, with us going to to speak with him. I think he'd actually like uh, like all of. I think he's hoping that all of us will help push him back into the the race, back into the campaign. 
he's he's been fairly quiet since he he gave up the the race, gave up the campaign. Has anyone had eyes on him? Like when you said, like, oh, your manager spoke to him a day ago. Well, that seems to be the the alley to the death. Uh, as I haven't. As uh, no one that I know has spoken to him in the last uh, couple of days. But he okay. he he announced his his uh, retirement from the the race uh, a, a while back. And for you guys, I believe it was uh, like actually on the. You found out about him dropping out of the race when you were heading back to Cybertron. Yeah. And, okay. he, and he's the only person who actually has publicly dropped out of the race. Right. Was he, uh, did he leave the race because of the, the danger or did he, was there another reason? No one has, uh, no, he, he didn't give any specific reasons. He just said he wanted to focus uh, more on, on his Conjunct Sindora and time with his, his, uh, time with his friends. Um, he didn't cite any specific concerns to me, nor do I recall hearing any. And that tracks from what you guys remember as well from the, the, the public announcements. It was a very generic kind of like, hey, I'm going to spend more time with the people important to me. I think we sort of assumed it as soon as we heard it. I mean, the, all of us. Yeah, I certainly did. All right, lead the way. I'm Madam Ambassador. Your ship. Uh, the truck pulls out onto one of the major highways that lead through the city, uh, and Moonracer points out all of the, the the sites and like the important monuments and everything that uh, that you'll end up passing. Uh, even though this is a transport truck, it still is moving very fast. It is Velocitron, after all. Um, but not as fast as you, Wildstrike. I know, it's a leisurely pace. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's so slow. This is kind of exciting, being on a truck, <laughs> on the highway, on a moving city. It's very <laughs> meta with the moving. <laughs> yes. Is it slower going one way than the other? Uh, I mean, what's, that's Bacchus of mine. <laughs> As you are uh, traveling down the highway, uh, an announcement comes out over the comm channel, like all your, your comm channels. Attention all citizens, the Sunline is approaching. All southern facing residents are advised to close outer hatches at this time. All residents of districts 8 and 16 are required to move to forward facing districts. Delta administration will not be held responsible for heat-related deaths. Attention, all citizens. The Sunline is approaching. Yeah, they all really cut it. They got it that close here. And Moonracer like, kind of has her head. Like, like when the announcement comes on, like she kind of like like drops her head a little bit. Like she's embarrassed. And and she'll enough. and she'll answer you. It's like, yes, that's that's right. Navitas has been has been slowing down in recent years uh, he still he still manages to keep pace in front uh, keep pace from the horizon but every year it gets closer and closer and the the rear districts of the city uh, get too hot to to be safe anymore so we are unfortunately required to have people have the citizens move to forward districts to keep themselves safe. Uh, it's unfortunate, but as you can see, the this the city isn't what it used to be. It's a, a very old city right now. Seriously, why don't you just move? Denison will uh, pull <laughs> pull her head back in the window and say, "Hey guys, you got to try this. Stick your head out the window. Feel the wind in your fur." Or <laughs> along your face, it's really magnificent. Why does everyone look so sad? What happened? I gotta try it. I can't. I can't resist. <laughs> <laughs> and she and Moonracer will answer uh, answer you there, Wild Strike. Navitas is one of the the oldest titans in existence. We can't simply just abandon him. We've tried everything we can to to keep him going, but 
his parts wear out faster than they should and it's just it's very very difficult to keep him maintained especially now that his and she kind of lowers her voice that her that his, his mental state is not as strong as it once was so you're letting the fate of all the citizens be decided by this bot that's breaking down there's no good answer to this wild strike. We can't abandon him, but there are very few other cities on the planet. We can't just... The ability to build a Titan is lost to us, and the other cities simply don't have the room needed to absorb the population of Delta. This city is the largest on the entire planet. All of the other cities and even some smaller buildings that are, are, that are tracked and wheeled, they just don't have the ability, the, the capacity to, to, to evacuate citizens to. Cybertron? Yeah. That seems like an easy fix. You have a space bridge. Just evacuate the population to Cybertron. At the very least, you lighten his load. Maybe you can get ahead of the sun line. It might come to that. It, it very well might. And with every year that passes, it looks closer and closer. That might have to be the the case. You know, don't forget that the contact with Cybertron is a very recent thing, and it's not been something that has been an option for us before. And I think it's it's just taking a while for our citizens to come to terms with that. Hey, hey Wild Strike, can you get about three hundred seekers to come? Give him a push. You know, he might catch him <laughs> up a couple decades. A little jump start. Yeah. Or just strap a couple of starships to him. That should do it. Right? <laughs> I mean, look at other forms of propulsion, man. Couldn't you just <laughs> spin the planet a little bit faster? To kind of like push him in and. What? No? <laughs> Well, Strike, I will give you this too, because you're as you kind of look up to the the sky like outside of uh, of Delta. Uh, I'll give this to you because you probably have experience trying to track the speeds, considering the speeds you're going. He is moving ridiculously fast. He is actually keeping pace with your top speed. Okay. So imagine that for a moment. A city that is is rolling as fast as you can fly. Yeah, and that's slowing down. Before. Exactly. All right, I don't think I don't think we're gonna fix this today, guys. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. think about it over, uh, over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's let's rest on the problem. That's that is exactly what we need. Yeah, get I, some, I feel like I get a good night's sleep on this big rolling disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> I feel like a solution. I feel like a solution will present itself. Of course it will. <laughs> All solutions do eventually. Until they don't. <laughs> So Moonracer will continue to point out like the highlights and the the the, the things she's proud of on uh, on the, on Delta. And just so you know, just in case it wasn't clear, Delta is the name of the city that's built on top of Navitas. So Navitas is the mobile base, like the mobile foundation. Was it like about the size of Icon? Yeah. Yep. Uh, probably a little bit smaller. Because it, it's more like compacted and rising upwards, and it just, so it can't spread out at all, so it builds upwards. And it is very densely packed too. Did you ever see the the movie Mortal Engines? Yeah, I think I have. Yeah. I the the rolling the, like the London. rolling tractions. Like yeah. London. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's a, a good way of looking at it. So there's there's she points out all the stuff she's proud of. Uh, there's not like. It's not a ton, and she kind of falls into like not saying anything for lar- for large stretches, and you can you can all see like the decay and just the the difficulty of maintaining a city like this without Navitas's uh, without his help. But after a while, uh, you pull into uh, off the highway and into a residential area, and you pull into uh, kind of a, a the a low low density area when i say low density it's like you know two three story buildings versus towers and you think that this is probably the, the richest area of the city uh it's also one of the f- 
furthest forward areas of the city. So yeah. great, great front views are. Is it? Mm-hmm. Protected from the sunlight. So yeah. Hope nobody gets vertigo. Uh, so yeah, pulls uh, up to uh, a building, and uh, you can kind of see that uh, that uh, fast track. Uh, there's a, a nameplate on it. Fast Track and Slip Twitch. Uh, now, Magnum, Carapace, and Wild Strike, you actually recognize the name Slip Twitch. Uh, she was one of the racers in the, uh, in the, the Speedy of, uh, not the Speedy the, um, the, uh, the Ibex Cup, way, way back in, like, episode seven or eight. Oh, yeah. Oh, the one with, uh, like, Rock, 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 Rock Raker or something? Stone Raker. Stone right. Raker, yep. right, yeah. Yep. She was one of the racers. Uh, she placed third, right behind Blur and Knockout. Wow. Was she one of the ones that didn't stop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a tragedy on the track, but don't let that stop you. <laughs> that, that one dude is probably still there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't the one who kept on going. I'll put it that okay. way. <laughs> P- piece, piece of cake. Yes. That's what it was for him. You. <laughs> that guy was a jerk. We should find out who he is and go after him. <laughs> we were just there. We could have done that. Let's go back and do it right now. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Mike. We got to sidetrack this again. It, 82 episodes later, but it comes, <laughs> oh, it comes back. <laughs> that fucker. <laughs> Just like you get, this group of people this just is, beat me up for no reason. I have no idea. <laughs> this is how we get to episode two hundred. We stretch out the plot points. We stretch them out. Uh, okay, what do you want to do? You're outside their place. Uh, is there a, a forward facing balcony? Uh, nope. Damn. No balconies. All right. Knock on we the door. Knock at the front door. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you can knock on the front door. That's your knock. <laughs> Got bells well, on my he... fingers and rings on my toes, baby. <laughs> Aww. Uh, takes a moment, but the door does open, and a fairly thin feminine bot uh, answers the door. Yes, can I help you? Uh, Carapace, I will give this to you, because I'm sure that you are keeping an eye open for this. Her hand is behind her back, or one of her hands is behind her back. Okay, I can respect that. recognize this person uh yeah i imagine you would recognize uh, this this is slip twitch oh okay. okay good day um we we'd, we'd like to speak to fast track if you if he has a moment we came here with the moon racer you can see her tense up when you mention uh fast track's name uh but when you mention moon racer it does seem like she she relaxes a little bit and she kind of looks but looks beyond you to to see moon racer and she'll kind of, you know, do a little wave. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah, we understand your uh, we understand your anxiety, but we're here to help in this regard. But apparently, uh, you're already seem to be fairly warned. She'll actually call over uh, your heads to uh, to Moonracer and ask and just ask her outright. I'll trust these bots. And Moonracer will give her like, you know, give her a thumbs up, it's like. There, they can be trusted. Fool. She doesn't know us well. <laughs> all right, all right. And with that, she will invite you in. What's she packing? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, seven plus 12 is 19. 19, all right. Uh, it is a sidearm, but it looks to be uh, some sort of like electro disruptor sidearm. So if it hits, you think it would stun you more than damage you. Okay. Okay. Uh, and she does try to like like move it to the front of her as she she turns around, but you do get the the glimpse of it. So they're not exactly getting the complete professional protection here. Well, this is this is their partner, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Thought it was I thought it was an employee. But she's she's so she's fast, but she's not a warrior, right? Right. Right. Yeah. This is is this is Fast Track's conjunct Sandora. Yeah. Okay. Built to be fast, not built to last. Shh. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to do something about that. 
she'll uh, yeah, she'll bring you into to their place, uh, tell you to have a seat. She'll go get fast track. Uh, she's gone a moment or two, and when she comes back, she's uh, she's right behind uh, fast track. And uh, you recognize him from his campaign posters. He is a gray and orange bot. Uh, looks kind of like a race racer, but. He's got like a bunch of weird little attachments to him. Like it looks like he has wheels, but far more far more wheels than Sweet Spot had. So altogether, it's kind of an odd, an odd look. Life science, twenty seven. And I will post this over in the chat for you. Oh my goodness! Would you look at that? So he's got like a couple extra wheels on his uh, his legs. He's like a a big like six wheeled. R- r- racing machine hmm. very low to the ground it looks like the closest they get to a tank here probably yeah, yeah. pretty fast probably. tank that's why you drop yeah. out of the political race was it uh, a tankless job I see you don't mince words my dear you Karin uh, unfortunately <laughs> not when I can help it I like Good to afternoon. cut straight to the point I can see it's going to be pretty easy with those claws. Uh, cutting to the point, that is. Well, let's just say if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, how no. big ears what do have we have done, Grandma, too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to scratch this finish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who, who, what uh, What actually happened? What, what actually, like, was an assassination attempt actually taken? Because it's been still going on. Well, you five seem to be well informed. The short answer is no. There was no assassination attempt. No one tried to kill me. However, I received a number of concerning images that featured my partner here. I was encouraged to drop out of the race. As much as I wanted to win this campaign, I want my dear Slip Twitch alive much more. I respect that. Do you know who sent it? I don't. They were all anonymous. Some were sent to my campaign headquarters and others were left here at my residence. Some others were sent to Slip Twitch herself. Do you have any of them still? Yes, I kept all of them. I almost wish I did. Give me a moment and I'll get them. Uh, Do you mind if uh, someone accompanies you? Uh, Good. May I ask for what reason? Uh, your Your safety. Hmm. Very well. Which one of you is it? Honestly, and I finger on my nose. <laughs> I was going to say, actually, you should go. Uh, I won't, but with your uh, invisibility detection on. I see what you're getting out there. All right. I, I think agree. you're the only one that I think you're the only one that could. Uh, I think someone else should also go with you because. For all other purposes, you're useless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll go. All right. I'll strike Dennis and you will uh, head into the 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 back areas of the, the house. I will lead him uh, with my um, to see invisibility on. And then, uh, what is it? Uh, Wild Strike can follow him. So that he'll be between us. He leads you back down through a hallway uh, into the like the furthest back areas of the the, the apartment and uh, into his what looks like his office. Uh, you keep an eye open the entire time. It doesn't look like there is anyone in these rooms. Uh, and yeah, you open the door to his office. You go in first, check left, check right, and everything seems clear to you. All right, I'll You're pretty cross over to any windows that might be present and close any blinds or curtains there may be. Okay. Easy enough. And I'll, I'll say out loud clear that um, they both know safe to come in. Okay. Fast Track will go over to uh, a locker on the side of the, the room and he will pull out a number of, uh, of data pads, uh, a good probably dozen different data pads. Uh, while these three are getting the, uh, the evidence that you need, uh, Magnum and Carapace and Legionnaire, what would you uh, 
Try to ask, uh, slip search anything or do anything? Um, well, I'll ask her. Uh, do you mind if I transform so I can turn on my signal jammer? So you're not alarmed. Uh, transform? Yeah. In the house? Oh, I, I wipe my feet, don't worry. Um, okay. You can make a, a quick culture check if you want. It's ta- is that taboo? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting there. I have a 16, and, and Velocitronian is one of my languages. Works for me. And um, Maggie Thags? 23. 23, all right. 19 and 23. Yeah, both of you uh, are, can recognize this. The idea of a, a transformer that turns into a building on Velocitron is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I was actually going to turn it into a hat, but, you know... <laughs> That can't, well, I that should can't say, be any better, I imagine. <laughs> I, I should say, any anyone that turns into something that does not move... I, I, like, okay, I'll, I'll put it this way. The moment that you transform and turn into an object, like, her expression just, like, drops completely. Like, it, it's like she's looking at someone with a disability. That wow. That's how she views it. Because no one on Velocitron turns into a stationary object. No yeah. one. This is this is unheard of <laughs> for for Transformers. Uh, maybe, we should, maybe we should leave them to their fate. <laughs> <laughs> but I will turn on my signal jammer nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> and she, like, what, once it happens, she kind of like, she masters herself again and she realizes that this is a thing that other Transformers do. But it's still something that really shocks her, and she she kind of like masters herself. But and then she'll she'll laugh like, I I'm I'm so sorry. Uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, my name's Magnum. Pardon. Uh, sorry for the uh, uncouth appearance. My apologies, Magnum. Is there anything that I can get you or do for you? Oh, <laughs> no 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 no. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just uh, I have to turn into this way so I can jam any signals. To get privacy. Can you do an uh, energon sweep too? Yeah, yeah. I'll scan for energon around here. I uh, no unusual signals. I'm guessing they might be. These guys might be somewhat safe as long as it's not in the campaign. But yeah, yeah, that's what I figured too. But but if we start digging hurt. around, that could make things worse. <laughs> right. Uh, the other three of you uh, head on back, and so you uh, you get back. Uh, so Fast Track will hand over uh, a a stack of data of uh, data tablets over to you and data pads, uh, and yeah, you want to take a look at them? I assume. Yes, please. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check, and all of you who are in the room can uh, you can kind of spread about amongst yourselves and start examining. So individual perception checks. Individual or combined, your choice. I have a twenty-five. 25, okay. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. 38, natural 20 there. 27. 13. Oh, I smell a charcoal y kind of a burnt uh, ash like magnum. What? <laughs> it's like a cigarette sticking out of the brim. Wild Strike, you can uh, you don't notice a whole lot for it, but you can tell that there are a couple of like messages on these these images, uh, and what they are is is there are a series of images with uh, with knockout or slip twitch or both of them together, uh, and a couple of them have the phrase on it: "One Velocitronian down, one to go." Uh, Magnum and Carapace, uh, you get that, but you also see that. Uh, several of the images here are not just of of the two of them, but specifically the two of them in candid shots. So you you think that someone was either you know caught them at an unaware moment or or just happened to be you know like, like catch them at that that unguarded moment in their relationship. So they were being stalked. Yeah. Uh, and also, the individual shots of Slip Twitch only, they are all taken 
on Cybertron, and you can recognize some of the landmarks that are in the uh, those shots. They're all around the, the city, but likely at some like campaign stops. But the ones that only show Slip Twitch were only on Cybertron. Are the, re- are the rest of them all on Velocitron? It's a, it's a mix, yeah. Some are on Velocitron, some are like elsewhere, but the specifically the ones that only show Slip Twitch are only on Cybertron. Denison, you notice one other thing on this, uh, and kind of as you're talking it over with everyone, you kind of help to put two and two together on this. All of the shots that were taken on Cybertron specifically are at public events or events that were labeled press only. Aha! Uh-huh. Did you see this there? Uh, so the question I had is that the, the person, you said the knockout is the guy that died? You said one down, one to go? Sweet Spot died. Yeah, they're referring to... Oh, okay. So I, I thought you were saying like the... Okay, so the, the picture of the two people in Candid Moments were these two people that are dating. Not It's not like, oh, here's actually a picture of you dating somebody else. Okay. Nothing I mean, salacious. Like, yeah. I mean, there are some pretty <clears throat> candid moments in these shots, but in the end, it, it's all, yeah, patty right. cake. it's just shots of them. Patty cake, patty cake. <laughs> <laughs> I get awesome. that reference. That was a great picture film. Wow, is that Roger Rabbit? It is. It was. Wow, it was. That's amazing. All right. Um, how from uh, from the, the the various viewpoints. How tall is the is the photographer? You you discount the ones that are like looking up at steep angles, like looking up at a podium or a stage. Uh, but the ones that are like both at ground level, you are correct. The viewpoint is lower, like the size of a tiny bot. So okay. Our, so jerk face jerk face is probably the one. This is very useful. Thank you. We think we know who was taking these pictures. You do? Yes. Who is it? Uh, I'll just radio everyone. Should we tell them? We probably should. Just can't imagine. Can you keep a secret? Because they're still going to be on an under observation. I'll keep this quiet for now. But if we get more of these, then I will take action to stop it. All right. Fair enough. We're not interested in you guys getting hurt by this. We think uh, it was, uh, what is his name? Waveform. Wave, wave, waveform, yeah. The little guy with the lens. The, the microphone. Yeah. The, the camera that, oh, uh, who is it? Uh, the jerk reporter. Uh, lamp yeah, lighter. jerk reporter. Partner? It's a good name for him. I never yeah. liked lamp lighter. I don't, I don't know if lamp lighter's involved. He probably doesn't know anything about it. Uh, well, I still don't like it. <laughs> All right, yeah. you guys are a bit. Velocitronians are a bit big in it, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can hear the uh, slip twitch kind of under her breath. Like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was one of those I slow bots. I know. <laughs> And, and, <laughs> and you get the sense that she wants to say like the the object formers, but she knows who's standing in front of her right now. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Taking our jobs. <laughs> she she almost dropped the S word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's been. Uh, this is, we're keeping this confidential for now, but I understand. But. He has, he has been linked to the death of... Death Charge. Death right. Charge. De- wait, Death Charge is dead? Yes, indeed. Oh, that poor bot. I know I was running against him, but he was a fairly noble creature. Till all are one. Till all are one. The greater good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you're alive. Um... I think that because you're not in the campaign actively, I think you're probably out of the, you know, out of danger in as much as anyone can be. Out of the danger zone. Danger zone. Um, Unless, of course, we're putting them in danger now. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so we're we're, uh, we're going to find this guy. Yeah. So. The good thing is. More specifically, gonna... their boss. He's, he's going to be under observation by ISS. 
So his ability to actually do anyone any more harm is going to be hampered at this point. Severely. Until we can come along and hamper him more permanently. He looks uh, straight at you, Magnum. I want to see him pay for what he's done. Well, that's what we're here for, aren't we? But we also we also want to make sure to take care of anyone who's above him. Because he's probably not working alone. Her, her, her. Fuck, I'm sorry. Her. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, we're... Lamplight is a dude and Waveform's a girl. Okay. I sort of lost my train of thought there. Sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> There'll be another train. Well, we don't have trains on Delta. Do you not? Well, no. Everyone drives. Yeah, <laughs> about that. So, uh, what do you have to eat around here? Are there any little critters about? Oh, we have some Energon we can share if you're feeling peckish. This is a mechanic. This is a mechanical planet. Come on, you know you know the difference. <laughs> but it smells like barbecue everywhere I go. <laughs> it's really hard to get it out of your head. Burn rubber. I'm probably lucky that Rex is here because they would not be a tire left. Oh my <laughs> yeah, <God. laughs> that'd oh my be God. awesome. I'm starting to see the appeal, <laughs> or I'm starting to see the appeal out. <laughs> If I gave out hero points, you still wouldn't have earned one for that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what this was, Mike. <laughs> Cut me deep. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to find out anything else here. No, Aye, this feels very clean. Um, I'm going to go. I've been here before. I'm going to send out some feelers. Just kind of check out my my little network and see if uh, any little birds talk to me. Okay. It's called experience, lad. <laughs> Get used to it. Yeah. I think we should act like they didn't tell us anything, though. And if any of those little birds don't talk to you, send them my way. I could use something to eat. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, they didn't They didn't tell you anything new there, Magnum, but they did confirm some, some information you found out. Yeah, but they, we don't want anyone to know that they're confirming information either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, the technicality might be lost on the, 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 the psycho, psychotic killers we're dealing with. <laughs> that is true. Couldn't we have someone just stake out the um, the space bridge to see if they arrive? Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully, Why are you uh, all looking at iron, me? Ironhide's on top of that. Hopefully... All right. I guess we'll bid them adieu. Once we get out, when this gets outside, I'll be like, "Man, they, they wouldn't say a word. Couldn't believe it." Can you believe we wasted our time? Can you believe we wasted our time coming here, guys? Okay. Well, just in case, I'll right. be enjoying this vacation. Appreciate that. Well, without anything else to do uh, here with Fast Track, uh, the five, uh, the six of you pile back onto your uh, your transport. Uh, where do you wanna? Where do you wanna head from here? There really, wasn't anything else we need to do here, was there? Well, why don't we find an empty lot and I can we can camp out there until um, we can finish collecting information. I'm not sure what else. We can. <sighs> well, Moonracer will put you up in uh, her office for a little while, if uh, you want. Yeah. I can't imagine there's very much room if this is a highly densely populated city. So, any room that can be offered to us. Your transport is rolling down the Velocitronian Expressway as you head over to Moonracer's office. She is quiet this time around, sitting and enjoying the ride. Probably a rare experience for her. From behind, a car pulls up the transport's bumper. Not unusual, considering how slow you're going, but they usually pass you quickly. But this one stays on your tail and is quickly followed by a second and then a third one. Behind that group, another quartet of vehicles with riders standing on their roofs speed up and pull alongside your bus, surrounding you. One of them jumps up, shoots through the window, 
and lands inside your transport. This cannot be good. Listen, did you buy a ticket? Roll for initiative. Next time. Oh. Oh, fucking slack. <sighs> but wait, we're not done yet. Adam. Yes. A sleek Velocitronian racer is thundering down the road, tearing up the asphalt as he slams down the accelerator, mm-hmm. catching air on the on-ramp and merging onto the highway. Mm-hmm. The brilliant white and red pinstripe paint job gleaming with the night lights of the city. In front of you, you can see a gang of cars surrounding a transport bus. Obviously full of slow tourists from Cybertron. What do you want to do? Well, I suppose I'm just going to have to put the uh, pedal to the metal and uh, go up and uh, be a hero once again. And now we'll see you next time. Ah. Ah. (laughs) Ah. There we go. From the Secret Files of Teletran 1, Empire of Rust is written in GM by Michael Ordway. Headmaster Magnum and his partner Pythagoras are played by Matthew G. Candidate Sweetspot, representative of Velocitron, is played by Adam H.U. The Decepticon warrior Wildstrike and his partner Nyko are played by Mike M. And Carapace, the beast soldier of Primitive Eucharist, is played by Patrick Finn. Additional characters are played by Michael and Cassandra Ordway. Empire of Rust is supported by the humans and networks of planet Earth, whose online networks provide access to libraries of sound effects and music, such as Storyblocks, Sasplat, Blue Zone, and Dark Fantasy Studios. We are distributed by the Transmissions Podcast Network. Stay up to date with all the latest news and reviews in the world of the Transformers by going to transmissionspodcast.com or searching for the Transmissions in your podcast app of choice. You can communicate with the heroes of Iacon by joining us on the Transmissions Discord channel. There you can discuss episodes, talk to the cast, and download the rule set used in the Empire of Rust. Teletran 1, signing off. <laughs>